back at Sony with Tom. Uh, and we are here to talk about the Burano because uh, when did this launch? Like three weeks ago? It was like September officially? of 2023 so at not IBC. Okay. But people only just started getting in, in hand. I know like two of my friends bought one and mm -hmm. I think they just got them. So I, it's very fresh in my mind as a product, but I don't actually know a ton about it. So I was hoping you can walk me through like sure. the kind of high level points of, of sure, this. Sure, sure, sure. So Burana was launched in, uh, at IBC in 2023. Uh, we started taking pre-orders early on and we took a lot and we've already delivered those. So we're taking more orders and they're readily available. Uh, I love the Burano because it's an incredibly uh, hybrid camera. It's like all the best features from our cinema line all into one camera. So right. for instance, it's an 8.6K sensor with 800 and 3200 dual base ISO and a 16 plus dynamic range. That's specs that you see in a Venice 2. Right. Now it's not a Venice 2, it's a different image sensor, uh, but I want to give you like a perspective of quality you'll get in terms of resolution and dynamic range and those kind of things. Now here's where it gets fun. We added electronic variable ND, right. which is in the FX6 and FX9, but also IBIS, which is in body image stabilization. Right. And it's the first and only camera on the market to have both in the camera. ND and IBIS? ND and IBIS. Got it. Correct. So we have IBIS in an FX3, but no ND. And we have electronic right. val variable ND on the FX6 and 9, but no IBIS. At the time of those cameras, it wasn't technically possible. Right. It is well, now. And certainly some cameras have EIS, but that's not always as uh, right. reliable, let's say. <laughs> exactly. So uh, that's some of the features. Again, the uh, dual base ISO, fast hybrid autofocus system it has uh, some new additions to it. It actually has the ability to recognize the human structure, not just a face or an eye. Oh, wow. So if I turn my back to you, it'll focus on my arm or my back. And since it knows my head's attached to my back, when I turn around, it's going to quickly grab focus on my eye, right. or my face, depending on the angle of my face. So that system has all the tools, just like on an FX6 or 9, to adjust the speed, the transition speed, or the subject shift sensitivity. All those tools are there as well. It's just faster and more accurate as yeah. well. In terms of the resolution, I mentioned it, it's a 8.6K image sensor. It'll do up to 30p at 8.6. Okay. And then we have a 6K full frame crop mode that will do, and a 5.8K Super 35 that'll do up to 60p in those. And then we have a 4K Super 35 17 by 9 that we use for 120. Right. Okay. Now, all of those that I just listed, it's either just 17.9, like for the 4K or 16 by nine and 17 by nine for all the others. So this is where it differs from a Venice where you can do open gate, three, two, right, right. all that stuff. This is not designed for that. So the serious users of anamorphic, they're gonna still wanna use a Venice camera. Uh, that's the Venice camera, Venice 2 is the ultimate camera for you know virtual production as well. This is gonna be a great dock camera. You could even see it going into some commercial work, those kind of things. Um, but just like all of our other cameras, people will find other ways to use it because of the amazing image quality and all of the tools that you get. Now we've added as uh, some recording codecs, some additions. So not just XAVC L and I, but a new one, XAVC HI, which is for the 8.6K recording. Right. So you'll do uh, either HI in two different levels of compression and onto CF Express Type B cards. The good stuff. The good stuff, <laughs> which we have uh, one and two terabyte cards available. They're GPV 400 rated, so you need that sustained write speed right. to uh, maximize all the recording formats on the camera. Two slots on it. Is this uh... a... Yeah, two card slots plus an SD slot to do proxy while you're doing XOCN, which is also available in the LT version. So this okay. is, we have LT, ST, and XT on Venice cameras, different data rates, right? The LT is the most compressed, but it's still visually lossless. Yeah, yeah. 
but it, you're getting it at around 389 megabits per second. So it's a very manageable data data rate, making it the most popular, one of the most popular choices. Sure. In that, so we think, you know what? For this level of camera, that's perfect. You don't have to deal with monster data rates. You still get 16-bit XOCN. Right. And and again, the ability to record the uh, proxy video at the same time. Yeah, and that's 16-bit linear. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the proxies are what? You, I, assume uh, I believe you can... it's a 1920, 1089 megabit. It's just like sure. our other cameras. But what I've noticed is uh, with many cameras that can do that, and I assume it's the case here, like sometimes that down sampled 1080 image, even if it's 8 bit, still looks incredible. It looks amazing. It is. Oh, we're doing an interview here, buddy. So we got it. So one of the things <laughs> Sony does really well is codecs, besides image sensors and, and a lot of other things, okay. autofocus systems. But we have, uh, what do you call that? Uh, live to cloud for news. Yeah, we covered that earlier. That's yeah. very cool. And, you know, if you look at the bit rates there, they're very low bit rates, yet the quality is broadcast quality. You're, yeah. you're going to air with it. And I would say you could go to air with this 1920, 1080 if you totally. needed to. And it's funny when I shoot some videos for friends and stuff like, oh, could you shoot my wedding or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. which I don't like to do, but as I've done on occasion. I shoot it with the proxy on and I just give them the proxy and they yep. love it. Yep. So it's like I do the exact same yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Are you able to run uh, without these and still hit the proxy? No, you do need to have the main recording. Got it. That's could, the same with all of our cameras. Theoretically, could that be a firmware thing? Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath. Yeah, fair enough. I just I, I do that with another camera I own. I just don't put it in the CF Express yeah. cards. And I'm like, just if I'm trying to exactly what sure. you're saying, you know, just do the proxy. Um, Let me uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit of how the menu works and everything. So the menu system, the way the functionality works is almost identical to an FX6. Obviously with new menu functions within, you have the quick press for the status slash fast menu, which I don't know if that would show up here if we hit the menu button is where? Can you see it? The menu button? Yeah. Uh, ba, 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 ba. ND one two display. Is this guy? The, is the cage covered? Oh, menu. I'm sorry. It's we go. lit up. So you can see here. There's a, a touch screen, and I got my status pages. But I can also make changes in certain areas. Yeah. And save those. So that's real fast access. Then I do the long press. So just press and hold. And now you get the full menu. Cool. Right. And again, it's if you use an FX6 or an FX9. Even Venice cameras, it's a very similar menu structure. And for those who are not familiar with Sony menus or might be intimidated by it, you have a user menu that you can customize and just put the items. So it says at one time, you right. have to kind of run through, set it all up, and then it's real easy. Yeah. Then there's the home button, which then activates Lovely. the big six, which is on our Venice cam. Right. So. That was uh, a what huge I, update when the Venice came out. I was at the Venice launch years yes. ago, and I was like, oh, look, this thing that we've all wanted. You know. Exactly. And so what this does is it allows you to use this camera as a single operator or have an AC. So you can move this mounted over here, right. have the DPUs, an external monitor. Now you have this a, has a two, the, uh, two person operation. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there is actually a third party uh, viewfinder the... extension that um, is on one of these cameras. I think it's on the other one there. But that's okay. been asked for for quite some time to sure. extend the viewfinder. Uh, this will not take any of the uh, uh, viewfinders from the Venice cameras. Okay. It is not that design. So it's this one, that's it. And then you add any external monitor, it's going to be third party. Sure, sure, sure. And then on audio the, wise, yep. you have two XLRs that, uh, for the input. Good line, mic, and phantom, standard stuff. Uh, now this is an accessory third party cage and handle, but underneath this is a hot shoe interface. So if you take the FX9 handle, mount it to the camera, you can now bring in up to two channels of wireless audio right. through that hot shoe. With so the lob packs got, and stuff? Correct. Yeah. So you have now your four channels that you can record. Uh, outputs, you have 12G, SDI, SDI yeah. another 3G uh, spigot. You have HDMI, and you have timecode with a switch for in or out, and you have Gemlock. Wonderful. 
Uh, you also got Ethernet, I see. And, uh, uh, correct, and there's an Ethernet port there as well. Uh, next firmware upgrade will have it, uh, RCP control. Yeah, oh, cool. And then also, what I love to see is just standardized 12-volt XLR. Yes, you know, exactly, yeah. Barrel connectors can die in a fire. Uh, <laughs> it's V-mount. Yep. Uh, there's no power outputs. There's, you know, we learned from Venice that, you know, all these third-party manufacturers just going to do it for you. Kind of did what the industry was really Well, I mean, this for. is the wooden camera uh, thingy, Ex right? Exactly. So, uh, so you choose your battery choice. We're V-mount. You can put a plate in between. You can go to gold mount. Yeah. So you have that choice as well. And you'll get your power outputs through all, all of that as well. Now, there is a smart grip available as an option. It's similar to the one that's on the FX9, but it's improved. It has a little lever that you can adjust. Oh, nice. So okay. you just push the lever in. Now it's easy to move. Right. I'm happy about that one. Well, and but also having the built-in rosette is nice because everyone gets those usually, not yeah. wooden camera, but I mean the literal wooden grip, you know, that everyone likes. Exactly. Stuff like that. Which is why we made the smart grip optional mm. instead of having everybody pay 1200 Right. Then it's only if you really want that. Sure. Uh, you had mentioned firmware updates and I know uh, the, the camera's been out not in very long, but um, seen a lot of feedback that already people, owners, obviously, like I said, my two friends. Sure. Uh, is there anything kind of on the roadmap that you guys, you, I, Sony seems to be very good at constantly iterating and, and updating sure. the cameras through firmware. Sure. So is there anything kind of on the map for this already? Well, other than the RCP, we're taking feedback mm -hmm. and we're getting a lot of requests in regards to you know, de-squeeze formats, sure. like adding more because it does 1.3 and 2.0 right now. Um, and things in that area. Uh, but right now we're sort of in more in a voice of customer point where let's see what people really think they they want. Yeah. And then we can build a roadmap from there. Sure. Uh, one thing I, I, this just reminded me of, uh, when we were talking about the crops and stuff, Yeah. is there a like, for instance, 4K full sensor readout? Or is, uh, are all the different no. sensors, uh, they're no. all different crops? So it's 8.6K full frame and a 6K crop full frame. Got it. Then we drop to Super 35 for 5.8 and then a 4K Super 35 crop for the high frame rate. Got it. So Got it. yeah, that's what you get uh, at the moment. I was going to try to remember something I was going to talk about. Oh, so there's a new app that we've had it used to be called content browser mobile mm -hmm. for like FX6 and 9. We're moving over to a, a new platform. It's called Monitor and Control. Mm -hmm. And it works with the Burano. It's a way to do wireless. And now with the newer version coming, even wired control. Uh, it's an application that runs on iPhones and iPads and Android phones. And it's Thank amazing. You, for the <laughs> you could do really fine focus control with it. And now we're adding also multi-camera to that Wonderful. as well. So you probably want to go over to our monitor and control and get a little, uh, a little B roll of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Uh, Cause we think it's going to be a huge success. Uh, and it's, what's great is it works on a camera like this and it works on a camera like the FX3, yeah. FX30, which we know in our world that all those cameras end up being used in the same. I was you know, just talking about how like, yeah, the, I, I got hired for a documentary that's a, a ostensibly a Sony gig because yeah. they have every various camera you know it's whatever they can get because they all match sure. that actually brings up a question with, that I had which was uh, obviously you, not only do you guys make these sensors but you make sensors for pretty much every company in the world we're the world's largest image sensor manufacturer by far yeah, by, by oh, far I was going to I was uh, going to mention that now um, uh, but uh, uh, sorry my yeah. question was just uh, why not um, sort of just put the Venice sensor in, in a smaller body. So why design a new sensor? That's a really good question, probably way above my pay grade. Oh, okay, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> but, but in terms of the looks that the camera gives, it operates like an FX6 or 9 where you have, I like to say you get two cameras in one. You get the video camera side, you get the baked in looks. That Cinetone is a popular baked in look. It has really nice smooth highlight roll off and very natural skin, uh, natural looking skin tones yeah. across the board. And it's a baked in look. So you just shoot it, edit it, get it out the door. Sometimes you got to do that, right? Yeah. Um, in other cases, then you switch over to the, what I like to call the film mode, right? It's when you get to shoot log and you're in Cine EI, and then you have the LUTs that you're using and so on. So you, 
in a sense, get two cameras in one. Uh, we added some extra looks to the camera built in. So when you're in that Cine EI mode, you have besides the S709, which is the Venice look, we got warm, cool. Those are downloadable, vintage. right? Vintage. Well, they're, yeah, they're downloadable I, as I think well. I downloaded those first because yeah. I'm a colorist as well. But yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And they got the the teal and orange, yep. you know, superhero movie. Because you had some colorist design, that. like a few like packages, right? Yeah. The whole, yeah. And that's if you go to sonycine.com, you can find them there and you can find out uh, the latest uh, on Sony products, Venice, what projects, what projects are being done. Yeah, yeah. And Venice info and firmware updates and all that stuff. It's a really great resource to have. So sonycine.com. Got it. Um, I think I had a, Joey, do you have any questions? I always have to put, check with Joey. Yeah, we a lot. Okay. Uh, was there anything else that we missed? Do you think? Let's see. We talked about the image sensor, the fast hybrid autofocus system, the electronic variable ND. Oh, so with the IBIS, it's intelligent with the mount lenses. So it automatically moves the camera into a steady shot mode. Mm -hmm. And you have standard or an active mode, depending on the lens, if it's got that capability. Then if I choose to shoot with a PL glass, it's Because the PL is removable and there's an E under it, right? Correct. Yeah. So the PL adapter is included, as well as the this LCD monitor with the eyepiece and the top handle. Right. But you can, six screws, six captive screws, you take that off, seam out underneath the locking style like an FX9 nice. or you put the PL glass on now the, the camera realizes there's a lens attached but it's not e out so in the menu it switches from steady shot to PL stabilization oh nice yeah and so then depending on the lens again there's a low and a high my feedback has been just a standard steady shot and just a low PL stabilization perfect yeah it's very natural looking it's not overdone because that's always the thing, yeah. right? Like when it gets a little too perfect almost. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So my the feedback that I've gotten, we like people doing walk and talks down the hallway and they come back, they play it back and they're like, oh my God, this looks amazing. Yeah, so yeah. we're really excited about that. Um, and then again, having the electronic variable ND in there as well, because it is the only camera to have both. That allows you to just set your aperture, throw the ND, uh, into it, right? So it's two to seven stops. Right. And if you need a little more light, you kick it from the 800 to the 3200. Now you're controlling your exposure with the ND. Right. Is uh, IR cut on the sensor or the ND? Uh, uh, no. So you're probably going to need some IR filters. Filtration. Okay. Use. Yeah. Cool. Sure. Um, what else? I think that has to cover it, right? I feel like we <laughs> it's 90%. I yeah, mean, there's yeah. so much more. What you really want to do is Contact your Sony rep. Yep. Uh, see if you can set up a demo. We'll get a camera out to you. Get one at and, Film Tools. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Film Tools owns. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. And it really is one of these cameras that, like, once you get it in your hands, you're probably not going to want to let it go. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, seriously, that's the feedback that well, we've and gotten. I guess as a final question, like, what was kind of, obviously, I feel like I know the answer, but I just wanted from you like the intended audience for this because it's not like venice owner operators right, right? and it's sure was it just like i guess a better way to ask it is why not make an fx12 why sure. like have a barana you know what i mean yeah um well i just think we could add so much more technology yes the price point jumps up but you know you always get what you pay for so, yeah, so yeah. we just made an FX12, it's going to be just a slightly better version of an FX9. And then you want to get a camera that's going to maximize the technology that's available today mm -hmm. so that you get to have that camera far into the future and it's usable and it's making you money. Right, right, right. right. So that's the concept. Like I said, you know, dock work, you can see you're getting the commercial work too because it, it, it can do that kind of work. Now, uh, it's not as fast an image um, scan is on a Venice 2. It's right. faster than an FX9, not as fast as an FX6. It's 8.6, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's 8.6 versus a 4K, so it's not going to be as fast. But So don't strap it to a car necessarily. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, like I said, the feedback on it has been really amazing. We've already had a lot of content produced by it, and everybody that's come back to us is falling in love with it. My friend uh, Valentina, shout out Valentina V, just shot uh, this uh, ad for Sydney Sweeney's new movie that I mm. saw. She was she like just got the camera in hand and then went off and shot that ad. So oh that, wow! There you okay. go. There's one. Yeah. Um, 
cool. Well, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time, man. Oh, my uh, pleasure. I, yeah, I was... feel like I rambled too long. No, 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 no. I had a lot of fun, and, and you know, I've been with Sony for 24 years. Oh, and damn. So when we make a product like this, you know, it's like, how do you stay with a company for 24 years? We keep making these awesome products, and yeah. it just gets me so excited to be a part of it. And and this is the latest one that's doing that for me. So yeah. I'm just like really excited and happy that I'm still here still 24 here. years later. And next year is going to be the big one for me. Really? Oh, 25 sure, years. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, the I when I was in college, it was the EX1. Yeah. And uh, all that, that, and then much later, obviously the FS7. But sure. definitely when the Venice launched is when I, as a DP, was like, ooh, I think they're really starting to take this Sony's seriously. Sony's in the yeah. game, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sony's yeah. in the game. We're Not that the yeah. EX1 wasn't like a bad camera, sure. but you know. No, the EX1 actually. And the X3. Became the most popular camera we ever sold. Really? In the history, more, sold more, more than, than the FS7? Than all, sold more, well, that came out before FS7. Right, so, okay, okay. So it sold more than all the Betacam cameras, and then the FS7 passed that Got out. Got it, okay. And so, we'll see which is the next one gonna be, Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, yeah. I would assume the FX3, because, it's Oren's fault. <laughs> uh, I had Oren on my podcast. He's great. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, I told him up front. I was like, buddy, you guys really screwed up the internet discourse about that camera because now it's just the, the internet darling, you know? Yes, of course. Um, and maybe now it'll be this. But uh, thanks again so yeah, much for chatting. We're really excited about it. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Of course.